What's up, Hokie fans? This is Coach Mike Holmes, contributor with the Sons of Saturday, and this is this week's Hokie Hitter of the Week. During the NC State game this past week, the Hokies did not put up their best defensive performance of the year. In fact, far from it. Uh, the real thing that caught Virginia Tech in a lot of problems uh, was the constant use of misdirection and uh, linebackers getting caught up in traffic and it's not necessarily an, an issue with talent. Um, maybe there's some alignment issues. Uh, but those weren't really as severe as just the players uh, just kind of getting caught up in traffic. And really, NC State's offensive coordinator, Robert and I, did a fantastic job of scheming up plays using motion and misdirection to get our defense in kind of a, in, in kind of a pickle. Um, so... Again, a different spin for the Hokie hitter this week. Uh, we usually kind of pick one thing that the Hokies did well, and we kind of try to examine that a little bit from uh, from the offensive perspective, from the coach's perspective. Uh, today, I'm going to look at it from a kind of different point of view. Today, we're going to look at NC State's uh, offensive game plan. We're going to look at three plays in particular, and uh, we're going to take a look at what Robert and I Brennan Armstrong, Casey Concepcion, and that NC State offense did uh, to really kind of get us on our heels. Uh, and it's very similar to what the Hokies did against Boston College just the week before. Uh, we were able to move individuals around, use motion and misdirection, and get their uh, very aggressive linebackers uh, from Boston College out of position. Our linebackers play very aggressively. Uh, we sometimes don't make the right reads. Sometimes we, we, we see what we want to see and then we go after it. Um, and that's a really good habit. You don't really want to break that habit. But what you wish you could try to incorporate into that linebacker play a little bit is just maybe a little bit more uh, discipline, you know, uh, reading their keys and things like that. Uh, so we don't necessarily get caught up in traffic. But uh, again, the plays we're going to look at today are examples of what Robert and I uh, schemed up to be able to get our uh, inside linebackers specifically uh, kind of lost and caught in traffic uh, to where they could they could execute more proficiently uh, and make plays on our defense, especially in the second and third uh, second and third quarter uh, when they scored a the majority of their points. Okay. So uh, what I have drawn up here on the board today, this is the first play that we're going to look at. So NC State's here in the red, Tech is in the blue. Um, what we're going to look at today in this, our, in this first play, uh, you see uh, this is a formation that I used to call Mustang right pistol. Um, so we have two receivers to the right side, one to the left, and we are in an, uh, an overloaded pistol uh, here. Uh, so quarterback's here, uh, running back is right behind him. This is number 10, Concepcion. Uh, and then you have a lead fullback here. Um, you notice how we play this. We're kind of pl almost playing a base defense here. We're not really doing uh, necessarily a whole lot on this, uh, on this particular lineup, which kind of makes you think that maybe something tricky uh, is coming from the, from the defensive side. All right, so you see we're in a, we have a two five techniques on the end, a three technique here, a shade in the middle. Our linebackers are playing normal depth, normal alignment. Our star is here. He's apexed in between the tackle and the slot receiver. We have free safety over top, corner free, corner. Now, um, what happens here is really and truly um, we get caught in a blitz, uh, but it is NC State kind of recognizing that this, that's, uh, that's where this is going to go, uh, where this play was designed to go, and it was a, a kind of a perfect play for a perfect time. But you can kind of, you'll see here as we kind of draw it out. So um, as this play starts to develop, you're going to see Concepcion here. Um, he's going to bubble out and flare out wide. Um, and he did this multiple times throughout the game, but this bubble motion here is what really causes uh, a lot of our issues to take place. This cornerback, uh, this, excuse me, this wide receiver is going to be driving this cornerback off. This slot receiver is going to kind of uh, outside release and almost kind of arc block to try to get on this safety. Now, nine times out of ten, our star linebacker, uh, here, Keonta Jenkins uh, is actually going to be the guy who's going to be able to step up and make this play like we have multiple times during the year. Uh, the issue that we're running into on this particular play is that we have a we have a blitz called. So we're basically bringing the entire right side of our defense 
in here uh, in here to uh, we believe it's either a, a pass play or maybe it's a run blitz. Okay, uh, but we have our defensive end here who's going to be crashing inside. Our star linebacker is going to be crashing inside, and our Mike linebacker is going to be crashing inside as well. So when that happens, the only guy left to be able to cover Concepcion in this bubble is going to be uh, is going to be this strong safety right here. And so by the time he's running downhill, he's already getting blocked uh, or getting shadowed, stalked uh, by this slot receiver. Okay. Uh, the other thing that really sets this playoff is what happens with these two uh, offensive linemen on the right side. Um, these two offensive linemen uh, on the right side are going to pull, are going to shadow pull this way. And so when this happens, okay, our linebacker immediately flows this way. Excuse me. Our linebacker immediately flows downhill. Our, our, all of the rest of our defensive linemen flow. Our free safety flows this way as well because we see those, those guard and that tackle pull, and we think it's going to be uh, a counter run uh, or something else. Maybe Brandon Armstrong is going to keep the ball and go to that side, and Concepcion's a decoy. And that very well may be uh, the counter to this play. For example, if we didn't have a blitz on and the star linebacker uh, shoots out wide with Concepcion, uh, Brandon Armstrong probably keeps it for a run uh, going the opposite direction. But this is a real quick play. But it was also a way that Robert and I uh, was able to utilize our aggressiveness on defense against us. Okay, um, So real quick, let's, uh, let's get rid of this and let's look at play number two. Now, um, we have shown in the past that Virginia Tech is susceptible uh, at times uh, to motion uh, and it's a, and we're also susceptible at times to a little bit of uh, a little bit of misdirection, um, especially when we're in, we get caught in man coverage. Okay, uh, so on this particular play, um, in this is on the goal line here. All right, so NC State. Okay, so NC State has got a, a five man front here, well with a tight end. Okay, uh, they are then also running a trips look out here. Okay, then they're going to have uh, their quarterback here and Casey Concepcion right there uh, off of him. Okay, uh, Virginia Tech's defense. Okay, we're going to have our corner out here. Uh, we got our nickel out here on top of the slot. Um, we have our opposite corner out here. Uh, we are playing a, playing a six technique over top of the tight end. Okay, um, and then we have a four eye uh, here. Okay, so we're kind of we're kind of trying to take away the inside of the run with this defensive back alignment. Uh, we have our Mike backer in the middle. Okay, we have our other backer next to him. Um, we have our star position out here as well, and uh, I believe uh, believe that's every, oh, and we have our uh, our strong safety out this way. Okay, all right. So uh, the way we have we are lined up here. Okay, we're playing cover zero. This is this is man across the board. When you have man across the board, you have no safeties high. Everybody is man on man. Everybody has a target. Uh, we are absolutely 100% locked in on. In this particular case, uh, Concepcion here is being marked by our middle linebacker here, in this case, which is Alan Tisdale. All right. Uh, and this is a spin NC State ran on a typical clear route or a clear concept. Okay. We're trying to eliminate one side of the field by bringing them in and release somebody to the outside late, and that's going to hopefully be your open receiver. It works really well, especially when you're in man coverage, uh, and if you're not communicating very well and you can't switch off, that's where things get in trouble here. Okay, so in this particular set here, um, our, uh, our, near, our near wide receiver is going to be running a corner to the back of the end zone. Our two flankers are going to be running to the inside here. Now, uh, when this happens, okay, uh, Concepcion is actually going to be um, kind of motioning out into the flat. And when he sees this uh, motion out to the flat, Tisdale immediately has to go and get across here uh, because everybody else is locked up on their man. We can't really switch off. So as he's going, uh, as he's going out to try to cover Concepcion, then you, he's uh, running into other linebackers and he's getting, getting caught in traffic and he can't get out there. So um, by this, with this concept, now our cornerback is bailed, our nickelback is bailed, our star has bailed. Now there's nobody left over here, and that's why Concepcion 
uh, was right up wide open right here in the flat uh, to be able to make that play. Again, Robert and I used a uh, used a, a really good play design against man coverage in the goal line uh, to be able to take advantage of. Uh, and this happens. This is not a scheme thing for Virginia Tech. Nine times out of ten. Uh, a, a middle linebacker or a backer is going to have running back responsibility and man coverage. It's just the way it works. Um, unfortunately, you can't do anything else with that. Uh, this was not a scheme problem for Virginia Tech, but it was a uh, it was a way that NC State was be able to, was able to take advantage of our aggressiveness on defense. Now, uh, the last play we're going to show here um, is. Uh, very similar play. It was a screen uh, screen play that they ran. Uh, NC State ran in the second quarter, and it was also uh, it was also a way they used motion, cutting across the field, able to get a running back out uh, out in space. Okay, so let's take a peek uh, at this particular formation. So once again, NC State here is going to be um, in eleven personnel. They got a tight end to the right side. Um, Tied into the right side, uh, and they actually have uh, trips out here. They have a uh, quarterback running back here. Uh, Virginia Tech's defense is uh, going to be lined up here in a five, a three tech, a one tech, and a six I inside the tight end. Um, our linebacking core, um, our backer is going to be over top of here. We have our nickel out here, corner. We got our other corner out this way. Uh, we got our Mike backer playing in this gap here. Uh, and then we have our strong safety up top and our free. Okay, so uh, with this particular defensive alignment, okay, uh, again, once again, um, we are playing a, we're playing man underneath, but we have a too high shell. We're trying to take away uh, anything deep. We don't want to get beat over the top. Um, because they, they have shown a couple times at this point uh, wanting to throw the ball deep, so we want to take that away. Okay, on this particular play, this is going to be a running back screen um, that is going to use motion to draw everybody else away from the play. Okay, so our inside slot receiver for NC State is going to motion across in jet sweep motion. Okay, when he motions across the field, our, uh, our backer here, uh, is actually going to be uh, running with him. And so when he gets to the middle of formation, okay, that's when, when he's chasing the receiver getting across the field, okay, that's when Brennan Armstrong recognizes, okay, we got man coverage here across the board. Okay, now I have to just wait for this play to develop. All right, uh, when this happens, um, after, after the ball is snapped, our slot receivers, okay, they, uh, and our wide receiver to the outside, they clear out um, our offensive line is going to be all zone stepping to the right side, okay? They're making it look like it's a jet sweep. So when this happens, our cornerback comes up and plays contain. The cornerback comes up and plays contain. The Mike linebacker uh, is going to, is flowing this way. Our free safety is running downhill. Our strong safety reads it. Uh, and he's already opened up his hips uh, towards the field, and he's looking that way uh, to play that safety and try to get into his pursuit lanes if it is a jet sweep. Um, but what happens is that now once that play fake is made, uh, Armstrong drops back. The running back is able to leak out late to the left side, and we have nobody to cover him. Okay, so that so as soon as that uh, as soon as that backer realizes that he's got to retrace his steps and get back to cover that running back out of the backfield, it's too late at this point. Now, now the play's already been made. And so this is, again, an example of using motion to the opposite way, using misdirection back the other way. And it's really a simple play concept. These were The plays that we've looked at, we've looked at a clear route, and we've looked at essentially two running back screens uh, that were able, one, we got caught on a blitz, two, they used motion and misdirection uh, to be able to get us uh, the Virginia Tech Hokies out of position uh, in order to get make big gains uh, throughout this entire ball game. So um, it was unfortunate for Virginia Tech's defense that that happened. Uh, this is a this is something that we have gotten better at over the course uh, of the course of this year. And uh, you know Kelly Lawson w w was limited in his action last week, and so I know that that did a little bit uh, with regards to our linebacker play. Uh, we didn't have our best eleven out there at all times. Um, but I think moving into uh, this rivalry game with Virginia, uh, they're going to run a similar scheme. They're uh, 
their uh, their best receiver, Malik Washington, is going to be very much uh, used like Casey Concepcion was for NC State. So we've seen it on film. We've seen it in live action. We have a better idea of how to stop it moving forward. Now, this wouldn't be the hokey hitter if I didn't at least touch on one thing that Virginia Tech did really well. Uh, and this play, uh, again, was a, was a really good example on a day where the offense really struggled. Uh, this, was, this is an example of what Virginia Tech uh, has been doing really well over the past couple of months of the season in formulating and creating misdirection and plays uh, to kind of get the, get the opposing defense off balance. Um, why we didn't do it more uh, earlier on in the game, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I, I think we might have seen something on film that thought we could exploit them through the air, and then by the time they got ahead of us in the second quarter, we really had to throw the ball more to catch up. Uh, and you know, even though it ended up being a one-score game, it was the really didn't uh, really didn't seem that close uh, throughout. Um, so if you watch the game, I think you know the play. Uh, that we're going to talk about. So I used Virginia Tech in blue earlier, so I'm going to keep Virginia Tech in blue here. Okay. Um, so on this particular play, uh, we are in 11 personnel. Um, we have Benji Gosnell here. We have Kyron Drones over here. We have uh, Malachi Thomas in the backfield. We have Xavier Turner Bradshaw, XTB right here. We have 83, Jalen Lane, and we have nine, Daquan Felton back on this side. Uh, for NC State's defense, again, they played a kind of a 3-3 stack look. Uh, so they're going to have uh, their 4-I here. Uh, they're going to have their zero technique here, another 4-I here. Uh, Peyton Wilson, who was all over the field, um, is, their, is their linebacker who's going to be lined up right here. Uh, you have corners to the outside. Uh, you have their strong safety here. You got their linebacker over top of, uh, over top of the tight end. Uh, they have one free safety high, uh, and they're going to have their other outside linebacker out this way. Okay, uh, so as excuse me, one this one linebacker. There we go. Uh, so you can see this well, this defensive formation. Once again, uh, a lot of things that offensive coordinators look for is they want to kind of divide the field in half. Okay. If you divide the field in half, you're looking for anywhere where you have an advantage, where you have an overload. Okay. Um, so we have a, we have uh, multiple personnel over here. They've followed uh, they followed us in their formation uh, with our strong side of the field. Uh, we essentially have four eligible receivers back on this side, uh, and we're going to use a little misdirection here uh, to kind of make some magic happen. So um, if you remember, a couple weeks ago we ran a uh, we ran a play to Jalen Lane, where he went into orbit motion into the backfield, okay? And then he released back out, and we caught him on a flare pass. He was able to score a touchdown against Boston College. So NC State sees that on film. They recognize it. They're looking for it. They say, okay, if he goes into return motion, okay, after running that orbit, uh, chances are he's getting the ball. So as soon as they see that motion, they begin to all flow in that direction. So that really helps us out. Um, when we start doing this. So Jalen Lane goes in motion and he returns out wide. Okay. As soon as the ball snapped though, great art block by Benji Gosnell. Um, the, uh, the line starts, uh, defensive line for NC State uh, starts pushing in this direction. They see the play going. Okay. Uh, Malachi Thomas does a really good job of stepping up, making a block. Um, Kyron Drones is uh, attacks the edge like he's going to run. He's going to be running an option uh, with Jalen Lane, so he's basically looking like he's got a pitch man. Um, Xavier Turner Bradshaw, uh, as soon as the ball snapped, is going to motion and he's going to go in between. He's going to catch the ball on a pitch going back the other way, and he's going to take it to the house. Now, here's the great thing that happened. So when so the reason why this play worked once again, NC State's defense recognized that orbit motion. Uh, and that return going that the other way. So as soon as that ball snapped, you have linebackers, um, strong safeties. They're all flowing towards the play, okay? They're all flowing in that opposite direction. Our uh, Daquan Felton does a great job of outside release, uh, running that ball out. But our, outs uh, so, but our center, our guard, and our tackle on the right side um, are able to invite that rush in uh, and then release downfield and start looking for loose people to block 
But everybody is so aggressive into stopping that play against Jalen Lane that nobody's there. So XTB is able to take that pitch and take it all the way to the house with nobody there to stop them. Um, fantastic play design. Uh, fantastic job of um, by Tyler Bowen of using an element of the playbook from last week and developing and building on it. As we've mentioned before, not just on uh, this show here, the Hokie Hitter, but if you followed the Sons of Saturday podcast and articles and everything throughout the entire year, we all understand that this is a work in progress. You know, Rome was not built in a day, um, and it takes a long time for elements and other things to be able to uh, to be able to grow and develop and blossom into what we eventually want it to be, what all Hokie fans want it to be. It was not perfect last week. It hasn't been perfect other times during the year. But the key, uh, the key to this as a Hokie fan is to keep the belief, keep the faith, keep on rooting, and by all means, beat Virginia. That school sucks. They are sorry-ass Wahoos. Go Hokies.